All right, Knights of Apollo, what is up, guys? How's it going? Is it hanging low? Nice. Anyways, welcome back. I don't know. Welcome back to the continuation of our Siege Tournament. This is a new matchup, guys. So we've, we watched in the previous videos. If you haven't seen it, be sure to watch it. We watched Gorilla Boys versus the Wing Wimsars. We watched both their games. We're now moving on to another matchup. And yours truly is in this battle. So... Uh, yeah, so this is the matchup between Wolfgang and the Crimson Chickens. You guys like the logos here? I love I love our logo. It's made by Ruvac, and it's it's got this like communist propaganda kind of style to it. It looks so stupid, and uh, I, we came up with Crimson Chickens because uh, Ruvac is French, and French people they always use like chickens as their like national symbol, you know. And it's because, uh, and I might, I'm going to paraphrase this and probably not explain it well, but basically uh, the chicken, even, or the rooster or whatever, while stay, he may stand and sh but he's always singing. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut. You just, I try not to cut. Anyways, he's standing in poop and he's always singing regardless. Something like that. Some, I don't know. French people, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we, yeah, we're the Crimson Chickens. So yeah, let's go. Your favorite team. Anyway, so let's jump into this one. Let's kind of explain what's going on here, what we're fighting for, and how important this battle is. So as you saw in the, the previous matchup, the Gorilla Boys, again, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the videos, go watch them. The Gorilla Boys have taken a nice lead here. They won both their, their rounds, and they got 11 points. So I, I'm going to be honest, the Gorilla Boys, they're probably the best team in our group. And right now, it kind of feels like all the other teams are just fighting for second to get into the playoffs. Now, of course, you know, it's always possible someone could beat the Gorilla Boys or there's a team that's really good and we didn't know. Um, but that's just kind of what it feels like. Anyways, uh, let's see what, what we got here. So on defense, we have the Crimson Chickens. Uh, so my ally Ruvac, he's going as Parthia. They are worth zero points. And I'm going Aravachi, the uh, loose... Uh, or, well, they're not Lusitani, but they're like Lusitani-like. Um, they're actually a little bit better than Lusitani, uh, but they're worth zero points as well. So what that means is if we win this battle, we get two points for defense. Now, on the attacking side, Wolfpack... I'm sorry, Wolfgang. I always want to call them Wolfpack because that's like... Anyways, uh, they're going as Sparta and Colchis. It's kind of ironic because the video yesterday of our practice round was against Sparta and Colchis. Anyway, Sparta is plus three and Colchis is plus one. And they get plus three for attacking. So they'll earn a whopping four, or not four points, seven points. Math is hard, all right? So if they win this battle, they're going for seven points. So their factions are definitely worse than ours. But they're going to try to overcompensate for their, you know, use their skill and try to take the day and uh, earn seven points, which would be a huge amount of points in one game. It would be the highest amount of points earned yet in our round uh, or, or in our group. Now, don't forget, guys, down in the video description, there's a link to the Discord. They make hilarious memes about the battles and the players. It's really fun. It's good. It's good spirited. And then they also have... Uh, all the resu results and information about the different teams. And also, don't forget, linked, links down in the video description of all the, the content creators. I hate that word, but all the creators who are making, who are covering the, the tournament. You can see which groups they're covering, and you can watch all the battles and follow your favorite teams, like the Crimson Chickens. Let's go! Anyways, I think that's, um, I think that's everything out of the way. So, oh, one thing I, one thing I've, I've noticed, again, really quick before we dive into this battle, one thing I've noticed is a lot of people don't understand why Sparta is worth so many points, meaning, like, they're not a good faction. And the reason for that is, is because they don't really, they don't have any swords. They only have hoplites, which are very easy to manage, deal with, especially at this level of play. They also, they don't have any skirmishing, outside of their Cretan archers, they don't really have any skirmishing capabilities. They, they like, the, the infantry themselves, they don't have any ammo that they can use. It makes them very, like, just like a sitting duck. They just sit there and take ammo. And it's just, they're slow, they're expensive too. So, in, in, this, in this level of play with these players, Sparta is really bad um you, you might personally like do really well with them on um, when you're playing randoms and stuff but most of the time sparta is just they're really expensive their armies are small they don't really have a lot of strengths and because of that they're easy to to fight against so 
Um, but nonetheless, you know, we, uh, we weren't like relieved when we saw Sparta. We were like, okay, you know, let's every match to us was like first, I mean, let me do normal speed here. Let me figure out what I'm trying to say here. Basically the last time we played in this tournament, we got, we got wrecked guys. I don't know if you remember when me and Ruvac played, we kind of got stomped. Um, well this time we're we're going a little bit harder here we're, we're practicing we're doing research on the maps so every battle that we face no matter who we're facing what faction they're selecting we're going hard all right we're going hard damn it all right sorry another cut i'm sorry i didn't mean to cuss I'm just... anyway so here, let's go into the strategy here so uh the strat was parthia because they have really good cav and ruvac absolutely loves using cav he's very good at it at finding you know little opportunities to rush in cav and do some good damage so he's sending out some uh some cav to uh kind of help out with this now in the inside of the settlement uh it's going to be mostly up to me infantry wise now of course ruvac does have a lot of parthian swords which are pretty decent he also has uh, a, a ballista here ready to go he's got some eastern Ar or parthian foot archers so he's got, you know, a good force inside, but really it's going to come down to uh, to my infantry, which is a little bit better than, than his. And, you know, he's going to have to rely on, on the cav to get stuff done. Now, I, the, the goal here, I sent out a unit of infantry, some warriors here, just to kind of support, hold on, let me, let me get this up here, just to kind of support the cav in case they do get into a prolonged fight. I can quickly rush up infantry. By the way, these guys are hidden, so they don't even know they're there. I've also moved up my slingers, which are absolutely infantry killers. They're so good at killing infantry. Nice little charge here. Look at this. Nice and nice little charge, kind of slowing down this advance onto the walls. And what I'm doing is I'm getting my slingers up here, and I'm just going for anything that I can reach. And it's right now I'm going for the archers. You can see I've already brought them down almost 30 kills right now they're kind of holding their ground and that's the point of my archers being up on those walls it's kind of like a safety net for the cav you know the cav will move forward they might get chased or pursued and then my archers here will cover them and that's exactly what's happening right here you got the archers that kind of moved in to try to pelt down the cav i moved up my archers to kind of counter that and i think that was a pretty good trade for us like really these battles come down to who can kill it each other's archers i mean it comes down to a big there's a big aspect to that so i think this was a good start we weren't happy with like we wanted a little bit more in terms of this cav engagement but i think the nature of using cav is not to get greedy you kind of want to wait you want to be patient don't rush engagements don't force engagements you just want to wait for the opportunity to arise uh, to arise and if it's not there then just wait and i think ruvac did uh so far is is doing a good job of that um he's just looking for opportunities here and there uh but so far so good i think i'm pretty happy about this we've been poking them here and there we're doing some damage uh they are moving up all these tortoises and they are going to be attacking multiple fronts here they've got a breach here they've got looks like they're gonna have a big old breach here and they've got two pushing this way so they're gonna attack us on multiple fronts so uh right now as you can tell ruvac has most of his infantry in position i do have uh my army is mostly consisting of well i've got like three units of iberian swordsmen which is like a low tier infantry it's gonna be my first wave kind of thing but most of my army is consisting of the scudatari or whatever how you pronounce them very good infantry very good infantry just like a good workhorse type of infantry and then i've got two units in the noble fighters which i'm going to save for the absolute end of the battle want them fresh want them healthy that way they can just tear and and just eliminate enemies um you know over time and that's that's the goal now back over this way oh you can see the scorpion is now under five they actually destroyed one of the machines of the scorpions they're now down to three out of four and they've only gained seven kills so right now they're kind of sitting duck to the enemy artillery which is stationed down here this is a perfect spot for that artillery so here we go guys it's looking like they're going to pursue pretty quickly here they've got a lot of the tortoises in place they still have yet to knock down all of the walls that they want to uh, they also have some archers moving up as well so what do we got three units of peltis yeah that's so yeah um 
the wolf pack or wolf gang sorry the wolf gang they brought a ton of peltis which i was kind of surprised to see that i've honest personally i was a bit more threatened by their slingers and their uh their cretan archers but the pelt i was kind of relieved to see that but i think what they were trying to do is kind of overcompensate for the fact that sparta doesn't have a lot of javi ability so they just brought javelin men and here we go here comes a sally out look at this some hillmen coming out from uh from ruvac i think he's just finding an opportunity to kill some javis this was kind of like a throwaway move now we got some swordsmen moving in as well some parthian swords i'm moving out as well i think we were just trying to get there's like a couple units here um that were kind of alone that we were going to go out and bully a little bit but you can see that Sparta's Sparta and Cold Colchis is recovering pretty nicely here, and I think I I think the reason we're doing this, like the goal here, was I, I think we wanted to actually sally out a lot of infantry and isolate this area and kind of treat it almost like a pitch battle and have archers up here, kind of support. But we it just didn't really pan out that way, and this was a nice recovery from Wolf, uh, Wolf, Gang. Uh, they did a good, sorry, it's, I keep wanting to say Wolfpack. Anyways, they did a good job recovering, and it just didn't really work out, so we're going to fall back. And in the chaos of retreating, Sparta does commit in some Spartan youth, so my uh, Iberian swordsmen are going to be stuck in the fight now. And I go ahead and form another wall here, anticipating another push, and sure enough, that's what we got. These are not Spartan youths, though. These are, these are royal Spartans. That's a totally different beast. But what I should have done here, honestly, guys, is I, I didn't want... There comes that artillery still coming in. Going for the uh, the Scorpion. But I think the Scorpion, now down to two machines, I think he's going to start focusing on the Royal Spartans. What I should have done is let them come in a little bit. That would have given um, the uh, Scorpion better opportunities to strike those Spartans. And you can see that he fell back his Spartans over here. I'm going to go ahead and maneuver these Iberian Swords. And honestly, I shouldn't have done this. I kind of get in the way of the scorpion. But I wanted to set it up so I could throw some, some javies at the Royal Spartans. Remember, that's the weakness of Sparta. Hit them with projectiles. And there we go. It was pretty good. I, I wanted to get a little bit better of an angle on these Spartans. But I think this is a pretty good spot. And this is a pretty nice engagement. Now back over this way. We had a little bit of a cav engage. There's a lot going on in the battle right now. But my slingers here have four kills so far. This one has zero. How can that be? Which one? Okay, this one. This one must have gotten all the... This one has 38 kills. And they must have gotten a lot on the uh, the archers when we, you know, saw the... You know, when we saw the unit skirmishing the archers. Because I was like, wait, I thought I killed more archers than this. They should have more kills. Uh, but yeah, that was a nice... So far, again, Ruvak being patient, his cav is now hidden, so maybe maybe he's making the enemy think that he's falling back. Anyways, the scorpion over here uh, tragically broke. I think they do return to the fight. Yeah, they do, but the enemy artillery has been focusing so much of their ammo on the scorpion that, uh, yeah, we didn't really get a lot of kills from the scorpion. 41 kills is not that great. Now back over this way. Sparta is committing more troops in. I'm sending in my Iberian swords. I'm pretty sure they've used up most of their ammo, and that's why I'm just sending them in. And now is the moment where we've got to commit to these walls, and we've got to fight our hearts out. Iberian swordsmen mixed in with the Parthian swords. And it's mostly Sparta at this point who's spearheading this assault. And I've got already my third unit and last unit of Iberian swords kind of positioned here. Again, there yeah, it is. Trying to find opportunities to throw some Pila in the, into the mix. And there's a little bit of a gap here. This could be a little bit of a problem. It kind of opens there. It opens it up, though. This is Ruvak making a little mistake. His archers are kind of committing to the front lines, but he sees it and he gets it out of there. Yeah, he's like, oops. These, these Spartan youths are like, what the? Those archers? <laughs> Yeah, I kind of wish my Iberian swords were focusing their fire over here. They could have been racking up a lot of kills on these Spartan youths, but instead they're kind of focusing their attention over against the Royal Spartans, which is not terrible, but I just think it would have been worth it more to kill these Spartan youths. 
Here we go. There we go. Now there's a flank open. And they are really trying to slam into my unit here. I didn't really want to commit this sword unit into the fight just yet. I, again, I want to try to exhaust as much ammo from these guys before they go into the thick of it. Just to get the most out of them. But so far, guys, I mean, balance of power is in favor of the attackers. Once again, some archers getting close to the fight. Ruvak! Pay attention, idiot! I swear, man. I have to carry this guy in every battle. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually the total opposite, but I'm only joking. So Colchis is now committing troops into the fight. We've got archers lined up here. And the crazy thing is this slinger right here, I believe, is ever so slightly in range of my slingers. So I'm going to try to make a reach for it. Ah, sling, they're like, ah. Yeah, they, oh yeah, they're reaching. And again, any opportunity to kill skirmishers, you got to take it. Like a favorable opportunity, you got to take it. But yeah, this part of the battle, I honestly was feeling pretty concerned. Uh, we were not killing as many as we needed. I felt the Spartan player was doing a good job of keeping his shields in front of our projectiles. And because of that, we just, um, you know, just not killing enough. So our lines are starting to crumble. Uh, pretty soon, I'm going to have to send up more reinforcements. And sure enough... I've got some Scudatori, Scudatari, whatever. I got these guys coming up. And um, they're going to be much better than the Iberian swords that have been fighting so far. I've also got some archers set up here, some slingers, because he moved his slingers really close to the front. And again, any opportunity to kill these guys, I'm going to take it. And that's why I moved up my, my archers, or my slingers, I should say. And look at these guys already have 57 kills. They are getting shot though. It looks like by Colchis. Well, that's you know, it's part of the game. You know, sometimes you gotta leave your your archers in firing range if it's worth it. You know. But I think Ruvak's like, hey, your archers, your singers are getting shot. You should get out of there. It's not that bad though. I still have 99 of them. It's like a, it's a it's a it, it's like a slight drizzle from the arrows enemy arrows it's not too bad back over this way we're still waiting for an opportunity waiting for a cav moment still nothing going on there yet and again that had me concerned uh, i was a little concerned because i was like oh geez this is not good we're kind of losing this infantry fight right now and at the same time we're not gaining any good opportunities with our cav so it's just completely playing in favor of of the opponent Parthian swords coming in to reinforce. Again, I was being a little stingy with my uh, Tsuditari. Trying to... Like, I didn't want to send them in right away. I really wanted to use those projectiles. And look at... See how I'm setting them up? I'm really trying to get an angle on these troops right here. And I think I've got... I think I put all of my archers up here. Or is it... No, these are just two units here. Where did my archers go? I got one here. I think I sent them back. Yeah. I used to have three sets of archers here. I sent one back. Just, you know, if there's an opportunity, I want them to be ready. I retreated these slingers because they're now down to 85. No need to force them in if they don't have to go in. And yeah, I'm getting some good hits here. Whoa, where am I going? Okay, yeah, he's going to... Yeah, the Spartans are going to reinforce along with Colchis to prevent any kind of flank fire. I'm going to just charge in. Charge in on the flank of these Spartan youths. Just get them off the battlefield. You know, they're not that good, but they can still be a problem. What the hell? This guy's going in and killing the officer. Did you see that? The guy's like deep in Spartan lines and he just killed the Spartan officer. What the heck? That's crazy. What a mad lad. And he's still going. He's still going. Oh my. <laughs> no, but seriously, look at him. He's like, okay, I'm done. I killed two Spartans. I'm done. That's awesome. A great fight. A great fight. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to reform them because we didn't want to overcrowd with the infantry. And again, I want to be able to uh, use some, some javis to uh, soften up 
the Spartans from afar. Remember, that's how you want to kill the Spartans. Not up close, but from afar. I also have moved a unit of Slingers down because they have they kind of have an angle here on the Spartans. If I can hit them from the flank or from behind, even better. So very cool. We also have a big push here. Look at this. Big push by Eastern Archers by Colchis. And I think they're getting real tired of our shenanigans. And they are going for enemy archers. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, Ruvak. Look at this guy. Oh, my gosh. Same death animation. Oh, look at this guy. He's like, brother. Brother. Uh. <laughs> this is awful, man. Just awful. Scorpion's back in action. Let's go. Has 41 kills. Let's see if it can crank up some more kills. Come on, man. Get it going. I'm sure you could easily chop up some scorpions. Or, pfft chop up some, some spartans he's using a scorpion to kill spartans but um yeah i mean so far so good um it is a little bit of a problem that they took this tower it's now being used against us but overall i think we're putting up a good fight but i think we are losing i mean the balance of power hasn't changed that much but overall i feel like we're losing the fight because we're not properly getting around these royal spartans we're playing into their hand you know we're playing we're playing in a style that that helps them and that's not what we want to do i actually charge in my infantry there because they're getting focused by arrows and i'm hoping that if they keep shooting at this unit they'll do some friendly fire against these spartans but look at these spartans 126 men left they have 44 kills uh 127 kills 278 kills 171 kills not good guys not good this is how you lose a battle you keep playing in the in in favor of the attackers straight plan this strategy you know now the good news is that i haven't committed a lot of my elites yet so a lot of those kills are lower tier units i mean this is a scudatory or whatever uh which is a pretty good unit but most of it has been the iberian swordsman so it's not complete disaster yet. So really good job by the uh, the Wolf Wolfgang. Um, they did a good job of just maintaining their ground, preventing any cav play from getting out of hand, and using that Spartan, you know, Spartan. What, what do you, what do you, what should we call it? Spartan toughness, Spartan defenseness. Like they just, I've been doing a great job of holding this front line and crushing the infantry and it's at, it's at this point where we go okay this is not working this is not working we can't keep doing this if we keep trying to fight up here we're gonna lose one they've got the arrow tower they've got archers in a position that kind of protects them from us because they can fire over these walls i mostly have slingers you know what am i going to do against these archers so we decide to say hey we got to fall back we have to fall back and kind of open this up open it up a little bit so our archers can get some better opportunity we also want them to commit more units inside maybe this will give an opportunity for the cav play you know all that kind of stuff my slingers here have 54 kills too uh I, we haven't really been watching it but he's been running his general kind of close to this cav and every time he does i'll fire my slingers at him any opportunity to weaken the general he's only lost two men but this unit's lost way more, down to 63. But yeah, basically, I'm just trying to get rid of the enemy calves. Gives more options for my, my teammate Ruvak over there. But here we go. Big push of archers. And this is what it, this is what we're talking about. This is good, right? We want them inside. Because they can't use this wall as a little bit of a, like a defense. Forces more units out in the open. It gives us more opportunity. We've fallen back to this arrow tower, which is now being used against them. Somehow, this is ridiculous. Look at this. Somehow they're capturing it. You see this? How are they neutralizing it when they're not in the circle? They're not even touching the circle. So ridiculous. Okay, now they've now we're taking it back. But Sparta's about to flank here. He's going to send some royal Spartans to take this. Ruvak is holding this by himself with Parthian swordsmen. 
And remember, guys, our strat here is kind of like it's going to be up to my infantry. I think I'm just kind of saving most of my infantry um, for like, you know, for the end game. The late game. So I don't want to say end game because they sound like a, nar a Marvel loser. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. If you like Marvel, you know, that's that's your that's your that's your issue. That's your thing, you know. Uh, but anyways, for the late game. Also, we didn't really see an opportunity to use these guerrilla warriors. So I think eventually we decided just like, eh, get them out of here. Send them back into the city for the for the main fight. All right, so they're coming in. And I'm feeling very bad at this battle, uh, about this battle at this point. I'm feeling like we are losing. I feel like, you know, we've done some damage. We've had some moments but mostly this has been a slow grind, a slow death for us. That's what it feels like. Um, so, I mean, it's better than a quick death, right? But it still feels like we're dying here. And we got to change something fast. Now, I'm moving up some slingers. He's got some archers moving up. We're getting hit here a little bit, but we're looking for opportunities. We're shooting at their, um, their javelin men because obviously they can't reach our archers. And there we go. They've just taken this gate as well. And we're, we're going to concede it. We're conceding it. We're completely falling back to these narrow choke points. So now at this point, guys, we have to hold three choke points. This one here, this one here, and this one here. Because if... I mean, I guess technically we could just hold this here. But, uh, you know, I don't want to... We don't want to lose this alleyway here. Because it could give us an opportunity to push behind them. But, uh, yeah, that's the current state we're at. And you can see we're falling back. And I've got the unit of Scudatari. I've got another unit in reserve. And here we go. He's charging in with some Spartans. And they're not going to really do much. They're down to 33. They are royal Spartans. They're good, but they are dropping pretty quick to uh, the projectiles and whatnot. But the strat here is uh, kind of like a slow burn. Use this narrow point and fight an exhausted Spartan army. Because keep in mind, most of the Spartan army has fought at some point. We even have the general in the mix, which, which was kind of hopeful for us. Because it's like, hey, we can get an opportunity here to kill, to kill this general. Like, that would be pretty huge. But uh, we still have a lot of Colchis left. Look at this. And here we go. We got the cab moving in. He's looking for an opportunity. I think he's going to make a play for this cab here. Let's see if he can get there with the camels. Yes, sir, Bob. It's not a huge victory, but it's something that we can kind of work with, you know, something to be inspired about. And we're taking out some of their cab. You know, that's one less cab unit that we're going to have to worry about inside. I also like the placement here of these archers. So it looks like they're out of ammo. Their daggers are out. All right, cool. Go back over this way. The meat grind continues. Scudatari, Scudatari, they're losing decisively. That's okay. Remember, we're just gonna we're gonna take this nice and slow. We're gonna use one unit at a time while they're currently using three units at a time, which is good. Moving up a unit here. What are this? Oh, Scudat yeah, Scudatari. And look, we're just kind of setting up a, a jabby play here. Watch, this is what we're going to do. I think eventually I'm going to retreat. So we've set up a row of skirmishers like this. Or they're not skirmishers, but they've got skirmishing capabilities like the jabbies. And then what I'm going to do is retreat this unit out of the way so these guys can fire. I think it happens pretty quickly here, pretty soon. So let's see if this, uh, this happens here. Come on. Come on. Come on. There it is. There it is. Here we go. Very nice job by Colchis there. Now, unfortunately for the Spartans, he doesn't move as quickly as his Colchis ally. That was really good play by the Colchis player. He must have noticed that right away. Because as soon as like I moved my units back, he was right behind them, which prevented Ru Ruvac from being able to do a good jabby volley. But the, for the Spartans, they were a little bit slower, so we were able to uh, throw some jabbies at the Spartans, which severely weakened them. The general has, has lost almost 
Wow, they've lost a decent amount there. Uh, more than 30 men, so which is a lot. You know, every man you can kill with those Spartans, it adds up. Now over this way, the Spartans have Spartans and Colchis have engaged. And they're now they're now gonna fight for this little alleyway. I've got some slingers positioned here behind this infantry. Again, this is why it's important to hold this little alleyway because it gives us it gives us a a an angle on the enemies. And right now, I think I'm slinging at the general. <laughs> I'm going for these hippious lancers of Colchis. I'm pretty sure that, or I'm going for these Peltis. I'm not really sure, but I'm going for something. You know, chipping away at something. Now back over this way. Look at this play by uh, Ruvak here. They've abandoned this position of the the settlement, and Ruvak sees an opportunity to take this back tower back, and he's gonna go for it. Look at this. He's sending forward some. Uh, depleted Parthian swordsman. He's got some fresh hillmen. We've got the uh, cav coming in here as well. C Cataphracts moving in. He's going to charge in before they can form any kind of shield wall. Disrupt their formation. He's probably going to get out of there. And look at he's going to he's going to try to neutralize this. I don't think it's going to work because there's a lot of en enemy infantry here. But uh, a nice play nonetheless. And uh, you can see that the Spartans are starting to push forward here a little bit. Fire! And uh, we're mostly holding with swordsmen and slingers. Got my archers back over here. Now! I've got more infantry coming up this way to, to help Ruvak. Because I noticed that we only got one unit holding this alleyway. So I'm sending in the reinforcements. This, I made a stupid play right here. Watch this. So at this point, Ruvak was like, hey, I'm going to retreat. And with that angle, with them pursuing me, it should open up a nice opportunity for Javis. I misinterpret. I, I, I noticed it before it was too, or after it was too late. There's some good volleys right there. Yeah so deadly man it's so deadly anyways Ruvak was like hey I'm gonna retreat and then when I retreat you should throw some javis and then charge in and we can we can get a good flank on them but I just thought he meant like hey I'm gonna retreat my unit can you cycle in some troops to, to let me freshen up these men but they're currently fresh you know what I mean <laughs> but uh, yeah I guess we'll, we'll do that later I suppose and back over this way, I've got some slingers. I think they're looking for an opportunity to kill something. I'm not going to go for these nobles because they're going to block most of those shots uh, from, from my slingers. Back over this way, we're just throwing units in. Got depleted unit of Scutatari. Fighting another unit of Scutatari. I don't know how you pronounce it. But look at this. The Royal Spartans now down to 92 men. We're slowly chipping away at this general, which is good. And now uh, it looks like I'm going to finally commit my noble fighters. Noble fighters going in, guys. I'm keeping my general back. There they go. They're going to charge. Look at that. Now, I believe for the rule here is that you can only have five units uh, defending the town center at the most. I assume this is far enough away. I don't know how it works exactly. Like, is it literally in the circle of the town center? Or is it a little bit... It's kind of one of those gray area rules. Anyways, I don't think we have that many defending this area anyways. But I don't know. It's just one of those things that I'm never too sure about. Anyways, here comes the cycle charge. It wasn't a terrible play. And we've got the Spartans kind of on the flank. But it could have been so much better. I should have just like... Stayed up here, got some job, uh, javies instead of charging in. You know, throw some javies, do all that, do all that jazz. But the Scudatari fighting the good fight, guys. And look at this, they are committing. Now the general's switching over and going for this alleyway. The general moving up. Back over this way, it looks like we're giving up some ground. And I think what he's hoping he's going to do is pursue, and it's going to open up a flank with the cav. I'm going to go ahead and retreat my archers back over this way because I'm not really seeing an opportunity for them. 
I sent in uh, noble fighters that are just cleaning people up right now. And I think that's why the Spartan g uh, general got away from this fight. Because he didn't want to have to deal with my noble fighters. Maybe, possibly, I'm not sure. But I'm going to get these guys set up here. I assume they still have some javy uh, ammo. So I think that's what I'm just waiting on here so they can just set up and throw. Or not, they're going to just take the... There you go, dummies! Like, dang, throw something! Bro, get some kills. Back over this way. Stuff's getting wild over here. I think we're just starting to lose this fight. Ruvak, I think... Did he charge in calf? No. Col the, the general of Col Colchis has, has charged in. Look at this. And I was like, oh my god, this is a great opportunity to get these guys. Camel cataphracts fighting the general. We couldn't believe it. It was like, why is this general charging in? Because if we can kill him, it's going to greatly weaken the morale. The bounce of power is pretty even, guys. Which is good for us because it was in their favor. So we're kind of turning the tide a little bit. But this is a very close battle. And uh, it's too early to know for sure. There we go. The general is going to fall back. He gets out of there. I've got some, my guerrilla warriors. These guys, these were the guys that were outside. But yeah, they, they're they set up here, ready to fight. We're going to reform here. So we don't have... Uh, we don't have a lot, guys. I mean, we have like two units holding here with like Cav. Not a ton. Back over here, most of our attention is at this fight. You know, I, it, we're, we're now kind of back to holding... Oh, look at this charge. We got like a Spartan river coming in. Trying to break through the uh, Aravachi, Aravachi defense. Have I been calling this faction Lusitani? I don't know. I feel like I have. Anyways, great great little volley there from the Scudatari. Noble fighters continue to fight, continue to rack up kills. They have 139 kills, which is awesome. We're starting to see some breaking here, which was very promising. Two units. And I'm gonna sw I'm gonna swap out. I'm gonna cycle charge basically, or or exchange, or not exchange, but like change out the units that are fighting. I've got archers that are charging in because they're out of ammo. Just decided to you know just throw them in. And my generals back here chilling. I don't think we I, because of the rules we didn't want to send too many units over here at once. Now the attackers are pushing hard. I think they're gonna try to get behind us. Here we go. The Gorilla Warriors set up, ready to fight the Spartans. I decided to move up one of my slingers up to these walls. So if they do engage, they would have a flank fire on them. Also, guys, if he runs anywhere near my slingers, which he is, I'm opening fire on this general. This little wall position here gives me a great... Yep, there it goes. And I'm like, I'm going to sling the hell out of him. Come on, sling up! Yeah! Yeah! So we're just slinging, having a good old time. Having a good old time. But Ruvak's doing a good job with his cav. Even though at the beginning of the battle, he didn't really have a lot of opportunities. He's using his cav the best he can within the city to get some good hits and everything like that. Back over this way. They're continuing to pour in, guys. We got him at a good little bottleneck here. A very good little bottleneck. Good choke point. And... The fact that he's sending everything in this way is perfect. You can see he's falling back over here. I think they just want to dedicate everything they got down at this position here. Instead of spreading their troops thin. But honestly, I feel like they should have. I feel like they should have like pushed down here and put some pressure here. Because guys, we have nothing. Some cav, random units, like three units of infantry. Most of them are depleted. I feel like it would have been better. It would have caused some issues for us. Because then I would have to focus on different fronts way more. But yeah, we're still fighting. My noble fighters, they're fresh. They have 156 kills. They've only lost a little over 30 men. And they're fresh. They are ready to go. You can see we are holding. And guys, I mean, it, the balance of power, I would say, still very even. 
it's still anyone's game. So you can tell that this is coming down to the wire. Here comes a charge of infantry. They are sending everything they got to, to beat us down. But again, my noble fighter, they're gonna have to get through my noble fighters. It's gonna be tough. And I still have another unit of noble fighters back here. Staying fresh, it's my general too. He's got some great abilities, some commander abilities. Back over this way. We noticed that they've kind of completely abandoned fighting this side. What are we going to do? We're going to push up. We're going to push up and put pressure on them. Force units away from this fight where they have to fall back. Here comes a charge from their general. And Ruvak's going to gladly meet them in battle. And Colchis might lose his general here. He's down to 16 men. I, I kind of surprised that he charged in like that without infantry support. And there we go. His general is breaking. This was huge. This was huge for us. And I'm going to be honest, at this point, I'm feeling very confident. I moved up my general to start using some abilities. So I actually, so it's a fun little trick here. Uh, noble fighters have headhunt. But one of the bad things about headhunt, it makes them tired. But my general has second wind. So every time I use headhunt, right after, I use second wind for my general to keep them fresh. It's a, it's, a, it's a cheeky little move. A cheeky little move. And yeah, we're just we're just laying down the hate. We got them bottle, bottled up. I've got some infantry over here just kind of harassing. These guys have 26 kills, no deaths, because they've been using their, their javis. Ruvak is pushing way on this side, and he's going to start taking back these towers. And we're going to put pressure on them here. I've moved my archers down here as well. Look at this. The archers can, my slingers can reach, and I'm going for their archer, their 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 javies, everything, that, anything that they can basically hit, I'm going for. And we're kind of like we're closing in on them from multiple angles. We're holding here, we're pushing here. We got archers here, we got cav coming in here, and we've we've kind of got them trapped. We got them cornered. And uh, yeah, now is the time to move in for the kill. And uh, I see they've abandoned the tower. So what I'm going to do is not even fight them. I'm just going to go for the tower. Yep. And there goes the cav. Look at it. He's kind of zoning them out with the cav. And I just get I just get in range of this tower so I can start taking it. Just like that. And I'm just going to chill up here. Why fight? Obviously, if I fought, I would lose. I would get out of distance of the tower. I'm just going to stay up here and take it. Which is going to force them to come to me. I, I do move up a little bit closer. I think I'm trying to get in range of my projectiles. There we go. We neutralized it. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. Projectiles going off. Oh, and he turns his back to me. Oh! He's going to charge up the hill. Look at this uphill charge. Oh. And that's going to give an opportunity for Ruvac... To send some cav in. And look, he's going to go for the Spartan general. And the Spartan knows that he forms a, a phalanx. Oh, downhill charge. Oh my gosh. One camel goes down. Rest in peace. Things are going well. My general has yet to even join the fight yet, guys. They're just throwing projectiles and they have 41 kills. My other noble fighters have 218 kills. And 103 left. That is a positive KD. That is for sure. So really good cab charge there from Ruvac. His camels do die, but it's worth it. Um, it looks like Colchis has abandoned the fight. He's going to switch up his units and charge in another unit of hoplites. I'm just going to keep fighting here, keeping them away from the front line. There we go. And over time, more and more units are breaking constantly throwing i still have ammo see look at that just constantly throwing at their archers as they're since their general is dead the morale is low spartans were trying to make a move on the flank they reorganize i i try to move my uh noble fighters to kind of deal with that flanking maneuver from the spartans they form this weird like column i don't know it happens it's total war but i mean they are starting to gain up, a, gang up a lot of troops here, and we don't have a lot. So now's the time where I gotta send in my general. 
And it's it, this is it. I mean, like, it, if they can kill my units here, it's it, I'm dunzy. Because all we have is archers. It's a it's a really close battle. I do have one unit depleted Scudatari or whatever, but they're going around the flank. They're going to kind of support the rear because, uh, you know, they want to help out these guerrilla warriors trying to take the tower. But this is so good. This play right here is so good because by trying to take the tower, instead of these hoplites focusing this main fight, they're kind of pushed back this way, which opens them up to, to cab charges like this. I mean, they formed hoplite there, so not a great opportunity, but look at they go for the general again. They're really trying to get this general. And my, I got some units coming over. I've got archers that are coming down from the walls. They still have ammo. Or maybe they don't, but it's just another group of bodies I can throw at the enemy. You know what I mean? Some slingers there. Lots of breaking from the might of my uh, noble fighters. And we're winning decisively over here. The balance of power is obviously clearly in our favor. And guys, whoo! I tell you what, my heart was racing like kind of near the half end of this battle because I felt like we weren't going to win. But it was once we fell back to this kind of bottleneck area and we started making like advances over on this side, I felt way better. I was like, okay, we might be able to crawl or you know, claw our way back into this one. What a great fight, though. Nice. Now we've got the general making a push through the gap. He's going to probably get behind the infantry here. That or kill these slingers. No, he's going to get behind the infantry, charge the rear. And this might be the nail in the coffin right here. Yep. Nail in the coffin. And I think at this point, there's no way they're going to recover from this. We're down to the last minute. And guys, the Crimson Chickens taking game one so yeah it's uh it's clearly over here uh but a great fight a close fight and let's keep in mind you know we did win yes but how many po points did we gain here two all right it's not a huge victory and keep in mind they're playing on with factions that are not as good as ours so they did an excellent job against us and at many moments could have won uh and they would have racked up seven points so the next battle uh, is, is going to be another must win for us because if we win this one and then let's say um, Wolf, Wolfgang wins the next one, they could easily get a ton of points and, and have the lead over us. You know what I mean? So like we want to try to come out on top and win both games. So both of these games are going to be vital for us to win. And we will see, guys, who will win it in the next matchup where we are going to be on the attack. It's going to be pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and end the replay, though. By the way, that, that battle is going to be tomorrow. So you'll see that the Game 2 matchup between Crimson Chickens and Wolfgang. Uh, but GG to, to Boss and Tony. They put up a great fight. Um, Sparta's tough. They're just really tough to use. And... Um, you know, I thought he did pretty well. I just think that, you know, we we kind of the once we fell back and kind of used the the streets, it kind of played in favor of Ruvax's cav by letting having there be more space to like flank infantry and stuff. Um, but yeah, this was awesome. My my nobles did, you know, did work. Uh, Iberian Swordsman, not great. This one got 120, though. My Slingers, look at this, all over 100. They got to perform there. And the Scudatari, great. 168, 92, 100, 392. This unit almost got 400 kills. Insane. So, yeah. I mean, this was a, this was a fun matchup, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Leave a like. Uh, and... Stay tuned for tomorrow's video, which is going to be game two. And then uh, we got we got more battles after that, guys. So uh, definitely check it out. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.